There are some weird strategies in BTD6 and we're going to cover them all, but we have to start with the normal ones and work our way up. So to start, we have the classic Papas, Druids, 21 Ninjas, and Apache Prime strategies. All three of these revolve around getting some support monkeys online, saving up for an expensive tier 5 tower, and having it carry you through round 100. These are very standard, easy to follow, and work very well on beginner maps where people are going for their first few black borders. They require almost no changes between maps and have a straightforward path to victory. Because of this, I put them as the least weird strategies in the game and we will be using them as our standard. Next, we have the Pat Fusty Tack Zone Strategy. A very popular combo as Pat's extra damage synergizes with Tack Shooters, and though very similar to the previous three, I put this a little weirder because I find it funny that the two main towers in this strat have such little range. Tied with this are the Sub Commander Strats as it looks pretty weird when you put a bunch of 002 Dart Monkeys around the track so your advanced Intel Submarines can shoot the balloons no matter where they are. Plus, you have some flexibility for spamming triple guns, APDs, or going for a commander plus preemptive strike for that double damage missile. Next, we have arguably the best strat in the game with the Striker Jones Mob Mauler Spam. Now this one does have a straightforward path to victory, but the fact that you are spamming tier 3 bomb shooters instead of having a tier 5 tower is a bit weird. Plus, you get to mix in a primary expertise if you're feeling spicy, and you get to use tons of abilities with Mob Assassins and Striker's Refresh ability. After that, we have anything involving the Sky Shredder. This one has a ton of flexibility with what hero you run and towers you use to get to this balloon abuser. Typically, you run Geraldo, Etienne, or Sai so you can save up a ton of money in the mid game, with the only real constant being buffing the Sky Shredder with an Alchemist and a Village. But the reason I rank this a bit weird is because this is the first strategy that you can increase the DPS of the main tower by microing it. For those of you who don't know, you can actually control where monkey aces spend most of their time flying by changing their flight patterns in certain orders. So if you have the dedication and skill, you can keep your Sky Shredder on top of the balloons and have it deal much more damage. That's way too much work for me, but cool and weird nonetheless. Next up is the Adora Savitar strategy, which is where things take a dark turn. Her sacrifice ability gives her and Sun Avatars extra attack range and reduces their attack cooldown. This is very useful for tough rounds and will also power level Adora very quickly. At level 20, a $2,000 sacrifice will give plus 50% range and make them attack twice as fast for 60 seconds. The hard part is having enough money to keep up with these sacrifices, which is why I like to do it on impoppable or boss events where farming is key. That being said, murdering your friends for balloon popping fuel is one weird and gruesome way to go about this game. Now we'll move into the next weird strategy, which I'm just going to combine all of the stalling strats. I don't know why, but something about freezing balloons so that you can amass a giant wall of spikes at the end of the track doesn't sound like a normal way to pop balloons. And we can take this to another level by adding Brickle to the mix and low Loading the water with powerful mines. Though weird, these are some of the best strategies in the game. Just have a 032 helicopter blowing the ceramics back towards the front and have a 012 ice monkey freezing them out of range of everything else. If your ice monkey is the only thing attacking, it will give you plenty of time to reset your cooldowns and refresh those spike piles. And late game, you can add a 402 sniper set to last to stall a ZOMG for a very long time. Next up, we have anything Geraldo related. He is so unconventional that anything you do with him is weird. The bouncing bullet sharpening stone strat has proven to be incredible even on the hardest maps. His hero cape stone avatars that are pickle boosted do wonders. His glue and traps are some of the only things that you can manually place on the track. His farming is weird with the rare Quincy action figure, not to mention the fact that he basically reinvented sniper farming with the rejuvenation potion. He has a bunny paragon and he makes the later 90s much easier with genies. This guy turns the game on its head with his bamboozling items, but the more we play with him, the less weird it gets, so I put him here in the middle. The Ultra Juggernaut is next, a classic super cheap tier 5 that is usually overlooked as it doesn't transition that well into the late game. That is unless you are playing on maps like Cornfield, Mesa, or Encrypted. Here, this affordable tower's DPS shoots through the roof and rivals some upgrades that cost $50,000 as its spike balls will re-hit balloons after bouncing off obstacles. And re-hitting balloons is pretty weird in my book. Normally darts just pass on through and only deal their damage once. After that, we have the Permabrew Alchemist. There is something funny about spending all your money on a support tower just to have your other towers do more damage. Nonetheless, it works very well if you can save up that much. Now obviously, this is pretty standard in any game mode that allows farming, but it's pretty weird to be running Permabrew plus some cheap towers in a chimps game. Up next, we have the Total Transformation and Plasma Monkey Fan Club strategies. Both of these are super good, especially if you have the timings down for when to use their abilities, but it makes for some of the weirdest setups I've ever seen. Either you're running 20 dart monkeys with a PMFC, or you're doing some funky stuff with Poplus Druids next to a Total Transformation Elk both of which make for some very funny looking maps. Just make sure to have some way to stall the balloons so you can have your abilities ready for every round. Next, we have anything that involves a carpet of spikes factory. Now the way I see it, there are two ways to fight this war against the balloons. Either you can set up a bunch of monkeys to manually pop any trespasser that dares to float along the track, 
or you can make the track uninhabitable by loading it chock full of deadly spikes. Similar to the Permis factory that makes a wall at the end of the track, but much funnier and weirder in my mind is this thing just constantly vomiting spikes everywhere, just hoping that it is enough to stop the endless waves of balloons. Huh, I kind of painted a pretty dark picture there. Anyway, next up on this list is the Infernal Ring. Known for its incredible temperatures, its weird strategy actually takes advantage of its meteor. Pair this volcano with a primary training village and a stronger stim alchemist and bang, you have yourself a 5 pierce meteor that will shred ZOMGs. Pretty weird that you pay for a giant ring of death, but your plan mainly revolves around its secondary attack. Next, we have anything involving Flooded Valley. I mean, this map's layout makes for just about anything we do weird. I'm talking about only using monkeys that can shoot over obstacles, making ice bridges that go halfway across the map, getting a carrier flagship just to place an ice monkey on it, and don't even get me started on primary only. That is a wild challenge in itself. Anyway, this isn't a set strategy, but it would be remiss of me if I did not put it pretty high on this list. The second to last spot is tied between 203 and 320 bomb shooter spams. Do they pale in comparison to the mob mauler strategy? Yes, but they still get the job done in the weirdest of ways, even on incredibly difficult maps. The 203s can handle any type of balloon to the frag bombs upgrade, and the 320s have great pierce and decent damage. Just pair them with a primary expertise, ice monkeys, and some mob assassins, and you're good to go. And the weirdest strategy of them all that is surprisingly good is the 250 Absolute Zero paired with a primary expertise village. When together, the Absolute Zero's ability becomes incredibly short, letting it stall just about every round, and the primary expertise chips away at the blimps and ceramics. I mean, just look at how slow we made those fortified DDTs on round 99, and the ability was back up by round 100. That is absolutely ridiculous. The only other things you need are some spike balls at the end of the track for miscellaneous cleanup and some single target damage for round 100. Per Chom Chom, the MOB Eliminator is typically the way to go for this, but let me know any weird strategies that I did not cover in this and maybe we'll make another one.